So I guess we have a deal, Son Goku. If you help us, the Akatsuki, we will help you get them back. Prepare yourself, Dan Saiyan. If you missed yesterday's video on the brand new Dragon Ball Super manga chapter, I'm going to leave a link to it in the description below and the top comment. Make sure you go ahead and check it out. Today we have Dragon Ball Shippuden, the latest chapter. Yes, it's been a few months, but we have the new copy of this chapter. The fight continued between Son Goku and Son Goku. If you are not caught up to Dragon Ball Shippuden, I'm going to leave a full breakdown story so far video in the description below in the top comment. Go ahead and check that video out. It tells you the entire story of Dragon Ball Shippuden. That way you're all caught up to this moment. After transforming into his tail mode, Naruto punches out Kizame, ending the onslaught of one of the most notorious Akatsuki members in its tracks. But as Kizame is launched through the air, his trusty sword seizes peril and jumps into action, carrying the broken Kizame on its back. But as the sword seems to protect Kizame, Jiraiya looks closely and realizes that there is something else going on, and he cannot underestimate Kizame by any means necessary, so he handles the fight from here on. Samehada shivers as Jiraiya goes into the enhanced sage mode. As Kasame looks onward, he realizes that the chakra that Jiraiya is engulfed in will end any more regeneration for Kazame. Seemingly, that is what's going on with the sword. The sword is trying to bring Kazame back into the field of battle. And that is when Kazame realizes the hard truth. And that is that they finally realize exactly how Kazame and Itachi are fighting. And since Kazame is defending Itachi, they are both going to die here, Jiraiya, and maybe with the assist of Naruto will take both the Akatsuki members out. Remember, Itachi is stuck in this Genjutsu trying to hold Goku in it, and since all his attention and chakra are delved into this Genjutsu, he cannot move and therefore is vulnerable. So if the situation does not change or more Akatsuki members don't show up, then they are going to lose. And that is when Itachi responds with something that I didn't really see coming and that is that he basically has signed his own death warrant by holding Goku in this Genjutsu. If he relinquishes the Genjutsu, Goku is strong and fast enough to obliterate Itachi and Kizame. So Itachi's fate is sealed regardless. If he lets go of the Genjutsu, Goku kills him. If he holds the Genjutsu, Jiraiya kills him. But he says that Kizame can still make it. He can still run away. And as the fire rages inside the Genjutsu battlefield, Son Goku is thinking back to what the Akatsuki had told her, that if she strikes a deal with them, then the Akatsuki can help her get them back. Now, whether that means revenge or to get someone she lost is unsure, but right now she is thinking back to the deal that she struck making it clear that she may not just be a Genjutsu after all, she actually may be a real life living person. Son Goku agrees with Goku that right now in her condition, if an attack hits her in Super Saiyan 2, then she will most certainly lose, let alone the Super Saiyan 3 that Goku is holding. And Goku concurs saying that he kind of wishes that she could touch him because he is wanting a fight, but right now he is pulling his punches trying not to kill her. And I know what you're all thinking, but um, I'm not going to make the comments here that you guys all want me to make. And that is when Goku pokes the bear by saying that considering her abilities, those she must have killed must have been ridiculously weak. And this is enough to trigger female son Goku's rage and she explodes into a fury of ki, screaming to the top of her lungs, how dare you. And as her hair grows and the ki envelops her, it is clear exactly what has happened. She has been pushed into the Super Saiyan 3 state 
to Goku's gleeful expression. Goku's happy because now he has the fight that he wanted. But since Son Goku has been mimicking his transformations up to this point, it is kind of strange that she would have to have some sort of outer trigger to go into the Super Saiyan 3 state since she's been just copying Goku's transformations. But this just holds more credence to the fact that she more than likely isn't just a Genjutsu, but she is a real life person that she is maybe an alternate version of Goku from a different dimension, which would fit nicely into the multiverse aspect of Dragon Ball Shippuden. But female son Goku makes it clear, I only need one hit. And if you haven't noticed already, I haven't mentioned it yet, but the artwork in this is phenomenal. It was the same thing with the last chapter, the renewal series, the one that has continued after years and years of hiatus. The last chapter in this one has a more detailed and more visceral type of art style, and I definitely love it. I think that the original had its moments, and it was really, really good, and it was very minimalistic, but it still was pretty cool. But I definitely like this because it gives a lot more of an epic tone to exactly what this fight means. Without warning, she strikes Goku head on and Goku, still standing, says you were saying, being cocky as all hell, I love Super Saiyan 3 Goku. She yells at him again, shut up. And with her temper rising, they go into a flurry of punches, punching, delivering, kicks, headbutts, and just going toe to toe, even Goku looking like he has taken a few punches to the face and loving every second of it. Of course, I would love it too, wink wink nudge nudge, but son Goku, female son Goku really is giving our boy a run for his money and it seems like right now they are pushing the limits of the Genjutsu flying all through the space and screaming at the top of their lungs using abilities and power levels that they have never shown before and I'm not exactly sure how Itachi is holding this all together without breaking apart or having his mind splintered open but yes this is an epic fight in a Genjutsu what I've always wanted to see in Dragon Ball Shippuden and I'm so happy that we finally get to see it. Itachi barely holding it together as Jiraiya after he dies what will happen to Sasuke? Dry, of course, has the diplomatic answer, the real answer, and that is that Sasuke is a Ronin. He is an ex-ninja and a traitor too, and that is when Naruto stops Jiraiya from talking, yelling that Sasuke will never be a traitor, and even if everyone drops him, I won't. Because Naruto makes it clear here and now that he will save him because he is his friend. And this draws a smile across Itachi's face. And that is the end of today's chapter, guys. This was a long time coming, but it was definitely worth the wait. Make sure you go ahead and check out the Dragon Ball Fan Manga updates on the creator's Twitter account. I'm going to leave a link to it in the description below in the top comment. And if you made it to this point in the video, you are now part of the hashtag end of video squad. Thank you guys so much for all your support. Make sure to drop that comment with that hashtag for a chance to be featured in my next video. Today, I'm going to be responding to Daniel Velosa. Damn, you really want Frieza dead. Wow, that's tough. R.I.P. Frieza. Yeah, honestly, Frieza is a character that needs to be gone. His disappearance from the universe yet again after just coming back and taking the reins of the Frieza Force will have huge ramifications across the dynamic infrastructure and economy of Universe 7 that I'm 100% here for. Plus, he has been the catalyst for several arcs at this point, so I kind of just want us to go in a new direction. At this point now, I would love to see like Goku Black return, obviously, or dive into Universe 6 and Universe 11. Thank you so much for your comment. Daniel Velosa is going to be Black Scape. Signing off. Take care, guys. Subscribe for more content. <laughs>